Woke up this morning with the sun down shining in him. The twins have been playing so badly. Roy Smalley, all-star twin, twins broadcaster, twins fan, has fled the state. He has fled the state, <laughs> and he is, as uh, we have reports, uh, we have reports that he's laying in a hammock, staring at a lake, trying to forget about this twin season. It's exactly what I'm doing, and I was so disgusted with uh, the Brewer series that I went to a lake in Wisconsin. Oh, man. Oh, my sorrows. Well, we, we won't uh, we won't try to read into that. We won't we won't make that more than it is. But uh, we do <laughs> yeah. have some we do have some stuff to talk about. Oh, by the way, uh, just a side note: Trevor from uh, FSN, who you work with, I once worked with, uh, just texted me today saying how much he's enjoyed, the la- especially the last couple episodes. He always listens, but uh, but he's right. The last couple have been great, and uh, we'll bring him more of that this time. But it's probably going to be a little more a little more hard edged given what's happening with the twins. This is Roy Smalley's Chin Music. Uh, you call it the Roy Smalley Show if you like. It is our baseball show on TalkNorth.com. Uh, check out all of our shows at TalkNorth.com. We now have uh, Jordan Taylor uh, doing the show with Ryan Shaver. It's a lot of basketball, a lot of local sports. Uh, fun listen. Uh, also, next couple live shows, July 17th at 6 o'clock, Cheryl Reeves Show at Freehouse. 5.30, July 24th, Russo Show at Delano's. And if you'd like to advertise with this program and uh, and be able to be aligned with Roy Smalley, I think this would be the perfect show for like a downtown lunch uh, or something like that. Uh, you can email me, jsouhan47 at gmail.com. So, Roy, you uh, you watched them in, in Milwaukee. Do you feel like they have no choice at this point but to sell off? Do you think there's still some hope? Just give me your state of the franchise thoughts. Well, here's where I think we and we talked a little bit about this last week, but here's where I think they're in a little bit of a bind because they don't know yet, and this is the big problem with this year, uh, as as I've said, and and you know that I feel about this. But I mean, they don't know uh, yet about Buxton and Sano, so they don't they don't know what they you know whether the backbone of the team is really going to be the backbone of the team. Uh, or whether they have to go a, uh, a completely different direction. If and so, you know, I'm not writing off this season, but it it just doesn't look like right now uh, that they're the caliber of team uh, that we thought that they were going to be, which was a a, a contender, a postseason uh, contender. And there's a lot of reason. There are a lot of reasons for that. Uh, but now, as we approach the the deadline. Uh, yeah, I think they'll be looking to improve the club. I think they'll look at at the performances of guys so far this year, and they'll have to make a determination about whether this is a is another stepping stone for some guys like Kepler, for example. Uh, and they'll have to determine whether or not there are uh, there this is uh, this is a real trend for uh, for some guys, and they'll have to look at okay, where have we been disappointed? What have we got coming up on the on the horizon, and what can we get? You know, they, they'll be talking to people. People, they'll be listening, and there will be probably everybody on the on the table, and then they're going to have to make that that determination they're, based on some. Well, here's we still think this about these guys. The show is uh, sponsored by Barry Coffee. You can find them at BarryCoffee.com, BarryCoffeeCO on Twitter. I'll tell you more about their business a little bit later. Uh, and the show is produced by Brandon Morton. Uh, you can find him Brandon Spancher on Twitter. You can also follow the, the entire network at Talk North Pod on Twitter if you like. Find out the uh, dates of live shows and release dates, all those other things. Lavelle, in my paper, uh, recently quoted sources uh, in the Twins organization saying that they were ready to look at starts to start selling people off. He mentioned uh, Escobar. Gibson and maybe Dozier as likely people to trade. I I've been saying all along that I thought Rodney was a logical person, but he is on a two year deal and they do like him and they don't aren't you know they don't want to uh, raid their bullpen if they want to try to win next year. So maybe he's not as logical as I previously thought. Who do you think is logical to go and uh, and is there anybody you would be really careful about trading at this point? Well, I think that. Um, y- y- Everybody thinks that Brian Dozier is the uh, is the logical guy, but uh, just because of uh, the performances he's had in the past and what he's capable of doing, here's an All Star guy, a Gold Glove guy, you know, potentially you know 25 to 40 as much as 40 home run a year guy. Um, he's not putting those numbers up uh, this year. It may have hurt his um, his 
value a little bit. Um, and he's also a free agent at the end of the year, which, which uh, hurts guys' uh, values. But you have to be careful saying Dozier and Escobar um, because you, you got to have some guys playing in the, in the middle of the uh, infield. Assuming Polanco comes back and is the everyday shortstop, um, then somebody's got to play second base. So, and I don't think that the, uh, I would be against rushing, uh, rushing young guys along uh, out, mm-hmm. of, out of triple A. I mean, I really would be against that, especially, uh, especially right now when you're, when you're trying to figure out the, you know, who the, who the main guys are going to be for the next six years, uh, seven years, eight years, uh, as they come out of the minor leagues. Um, I, I think he just now is a very important time to let guys like Nick Gordon uh, really believe that they've conquered AAA and they belong in the big leagues and not have to come up here and you know not knowing for sure uh, that they belong because they they haven't they haven't proven to themselves that they don't belong in the in, in, at the AAA level. So I think one or the other of Dozier and uh, Escobar potentially. Uh, it'll be a value, you know, for value received kind of decision. If Lance Lynn had pitched better, um, he to me that would be uh, somebody that could go to a uh, a, a contender I'd, uh, that needed another another starter, another capable starter. But you know, he hasn't been the Lance Lynn that you know that everybody thought he would be so far. So I mean, there's just a lot of there, there's a lot of ifs right now. And it's of, interesting. I don't know. Yeah, it's also interesting, Roy, that we talked all winter about uh, baseball's unwillingness to spend a lot of money on free agents that looked pretty attractive, including Lance Lynn, including Alex Cobb, uh, including uh, Logan Morrison. And in the Twins case, you know, the Twins really not showing any interest in even negotiating Brian Dozier, who has been overall their best player for the last four or five years. And it looks like the, these general managers and owners are going to be able to say, Oh, don't bring don't bring that word collusion to us. We were right on almost all of these. Well, yeah, really true. I mean, a- absolutely, absolutely true. I, I, and we've on a previous show we've also talked about what I think is just uh, reasonable management decisions, uh, re- way more likely than than a- any kind of uh, of collusion. We've got a new breed of general manager. We've got uh, a new spate of statistical uh, uh, data and uh, the analysis that that spawns the data that that these guys believe in and i think they're they've looked up um they look at players and say yeah this much but not that much because it's just it's not going to be worth it uh, long term and and i think i think for the most part they've done a they've done a good job of that uh, uh, across uh, baseball and i i don't i don't believe the uh, the collusion part of it. I think there, I think it's, it's more likely pretty good business management. Yeah. I wondered at times this winter, but then they end up signing, you know, it's not like they, they blackballed people. They did end up signing them just on shorter deals for less money than they expected. And like I said, they, they ended up being right. Uh, we have a lot more to get to on the show, including I'm going to ask Paul, just, you know, how do you evaluate a manager in a front office when a season goes this way? I have my own thoughts, but I'm sure Roy's are at least slightly different. Do want to thank, though, BarryCoffee.com, Steve Brem, a uh, friend of the show, friend of Roy's. And as we told you before, we've been to the roasting plant. We've tasted the coffee right out of the machine. Roy has now uh, set it up so he can have that same coffee in his home. And they're also, you know, this one thing we, the great thing about running this network is dealing with People who I've come to, you know, consider friends or trusted associates on all the shows. Are, most of our sponsors have been with us a long time, and they're people, you know, I talk to all the time. And that's kind of one of the cool things about Berry Coffee too. It's a Minneapolis company. They roast the, the beans locally, which means that they get to you when they're very fresh. They support the local economy. They support a lot of community groups and a lot of local charities and good works. Uh, they create jobs locally. Uh, they, they're putting your taxes to good use. They're encouraging local prosperity, and uh, and you know they also keep Roy with a nice little caffeine buzz going, <laughs> which you know is uh, not exactly necessary right now. As I sit here in the uh, in the hammock, staring at the lake, trying to uh, help uh, everybody figure out the twins. But uh, yes, uh, this morning I this morning I needed that, and uh, there's only one place I would get it, and that's very coffee. 
BarryCoffee.com, BarryCoffeeCO on Twitter. We follow them and they follow us. Uh, sometimes we interact with them on Twitter. You can check them out there as well. Great for businesses, uh, big or small. And I said, that, as we always stress, uh, sparkling water, water, filtered water, tea, you know, healthy snacks. You can get pretty much anything you want for your business at BarryCoffee.com. All right, so when a team plays like this, just like two years ago, as a, uh, a local opinion columnist, I get email after email, tweet after tweet saying, you know, why, don't, why aren't you ripping Paul Molitor? Why aren't you ripping the front office? And, of course, sometimes I do criticize people in management positions. Uh, in this case, I just don't have a lot of certainty that they could have done anything to really change the course of the season. Even if you want to say Paul Molitor should have bunted that one time in the eighth inning in April or something, or should have pulled that one pitcher, you know, a pitch earlier in May, you know, I don't see anything Paul could have done that would have made a – a 10, 20 game difference in the standings. And I actually thought the front office did a great job of finding value and filling needs in the off season. It just, none of this has worked out. And, and one thing we have to continue repeating Roy is everybody's disappointed with this season. Uh, even just me who just likes watching the games when they're meaningful. It, we are talking about a team that, you know, eked into the playoffs last year, then lost their ACE, their catcher, they're all-star third baseman. They're gold glove center fielder. That's that's a lot. It is a lot, and you, it, you know the easy answer. And and, and I've I've heard managers and, and coaches in every sport say that's no excuse. Some of the next guy up's got to step up, but we we got to we have to know in our hearts that that's not uh, the answer. It's great if something like that can happen, but when you're when you lose. Uh, players, when you put together a lineup and you're counting on key guys to play the whole year uh, doing what it is that they're supposed to do and they either don't or, or, or get hurt and can't, you can't replace that. You, you're not set up for that. You're not set up. The front office nor the manager is, is set up to say, oh, uh, Sano, the guy expected to play every day at third base and hit 35 home runs, he's, he's uh, going to be either hurt or ineffective our defensive player of the year in center field who hit uh, over 300 for the second half of last season. Uh, it, it, he looks like he's going to be an all-star. Oh, he's either hurt or ineffective at the plate. Uh, you know, on an, oh, our ace, we've really improved the uh, pitching staff, uh, the starters, and we're waiting for a couple of young kids to uh, emerge. And in the meantime, uh, we uh, have Irvin Santana. Oh, yeah, he's going to be lost virtually for the entire season. I mean, you don't just say, "Okay, let's we'll just go with Plan B." There is no Plan B in that in that scenario. And we all looked at what they did to improve the pitching staff, both starters and through the bullpen. And we all nodded in agreement and said, "Yeah, that." I, I don't know how they could have done any better, short of figuring out how to uh, to uh, get uh, Clayton Kershaw or Max Scherzer uh, over to the uh, to the ball club. I mean, what else? What else were they going to be able to do? And we all we all said, "Yep, this that that looks pretty good," and it didn't work. There's no second guessing about it now. the 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 answer is, it just didn't work. And uh, you know, one thing I wonder about is, I know one of the reasons Paul Molitor was such a strong managerial candidate. Remember, he he had he beat out a lot of really good people, including Tori Lavulo and uh, and uh, you know Doug Mankiewicz, who was highly regarded by the organization at the time. Uh, so Paul gets the job, and one of, one of the reasons they really liked him is he had a great relationship with people like Buxton and Sano, and you just wonder if Paul in his own mind thinks, God, I wonder if there's something I could have said, you know, if there's a meeting I could have had with Sano just to kind of help keep him on the right track. But I'm not saying that's realistic. I'm just saying that that is an interesting twist on this whole scenario. Well, I would tell you that, that any manager that has gone through this is, is lying awake at night for two or three hours in the middle of the night trying to figure out what it is that he might have done differently or that he, and, and especially what he can do differently or, or something, uh, some other tack that he can take now, you know, to, uh, to get things going. I and mean, that's what managers, that's what managers do. And, and the just, you know, the discouraging thing, if I'm Paul uh, Mahler, the discouraging thing to me is that, they can't get any consistency or any uh, timing uh, going with 